Hello, I'm Andrei Slavinskis. I'm, I'm a researcher at the Tartu Observatory and I'm leading the uh, student satellite program at the University of Tartu. Would you, uh, would you uh, share some insight about the S-Cube 2 project? What it is about? So in a way, S-Cube 2 project is similar to, to S-Cube 1. First, uh, as a kind of social economical impact, we want to educate students and we want to popularize science. It also has a very important scientific mission, which is, again, similar to SQ-1 mission, which is to test the technology for deorbiting satellites, which means to uh, help satellites to bring their orbital height down, and by, by that, uh, so-called space debris problem can be solved. And then uh, so the same kind of technology, the electric solar wind sail, can be used for traveling uh, in the solar system, uh, but what we estimate uh, in a record speed. About the ESC project organizational structure, how many people or students are there involved in the project and how is the project uh, coordinated? The project is led by a handful of people, by what one would call senior staff, and they help with uh, electrical engineering, with communications, with laboratory testing, with uh, software engineering, and so on. But then we have uh, around uh, four PhD students that do their research, so they, they are tackling the most difficult problems from the point of view of science. And uh, we have master students, around five, five to ten master students that are contributing to the project by developing the technology. And then we also have bachelor students, the most talented ones are already directly contributing. Uh, when do you think uh, your satellite is ready to uh, be launched? We hope that the uh, S-Cube 2 uh, will be launched in uh, 2018, but of course it, it depends on many factors. About S-Cube 2 orbit, what orbit is it is uh, designed to be sent? The orbit that we would like to have is uh, something where, where the satellite normally would stay for, for many years, for, for 20, 30 years. And the, and the reason why we want such orbit is because then we can see the long-term effect of uh, lowering the orbital height, and we would like to do it in, let's say, uh, two to five years. What are the main differences between the SQ-1 and SQ-2 uh, projects? So, uh, SQ-1 was, uh, for us, it was an excellent learning experience, and we learned uh, how, to, how to improve the subsystems of the satellite, and now we can make them better. We know how to test them better, and we can make them smaller. And if we succeed to do that, to make them smaller, then we, can, then we can host another payload. For example, we can host a similar camera that was on SQ-1, but uh, kind of the next version of it, which wouldn't increase the size that much, but the res resolution would be better, and we are considering maybe we can, we can have uh, more than one lens, which would uh, provide, which in that case, we would test the camera that could be in future used, for example, for proximity operations when you when you are uh, approaching another spacecraft to dock with it or to have some other maneuvers, then such camera provides the same kind of vision as we see, uh, as, as humans see, that we can tell uh, how far objects are. Thank you very much, Andres, uh, for this uh, interview. And Thanks. Thanks. <laughs>